how did you guys start out? Like, what was the beginning of the process? I, 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 and, I, and when I say, like, how did you start out, like, what was, where did the concept come from for you guys to jump into this? Well, I mean, we, we've been friends a long time, and we were both born and raised here. You yeah, know? yeah. So, you know, we, it was, uh, within our group of friends, he and I were always talking about owning a bar together. We just uh -huh. always wanted to do, we uh -huh. always had great time, and great experience, you know, going, going to, you know, bars, going out with our friends and through college and everything else and just having a great time and loving around people laughing and having a great time and I just really enjoyed it and for some reason out of all of our friends, he and I would always be talking about, man, one day we got to do it, you know, one day let's do it, kind of what you were talking about with your experience, you know, yeah, yeah. and the Virgin Islands, very similar to that and we were just... You know, saying one day we're going to do it. We kept talking about it, talking about it for for years and years and years, um, and that's when we lived here. Um, and then I graduated from West Florida, and I took a job in Tampa covering the whole state of Florida. Um, and so I moved down there, and uh, obviously we're still really good friends and still keeping in touch on a regular basis. And when I moved down there, what what year is this? This was in two thousand two. Okay, okay. When I moved down there. The later, like almost towards 2003. Yeah. And then I worked a different job completely, uh, in a completely different industry, construction industry, selling safety equipment, designing safety systems for general contractors and high rises and stuff. It covered the whole state of Florida. Uh -huh. And so I was driving around and I never really got out of Pensacola two months before that, you know, and so, yeah. and um, when I was driving around and we were looking at places and we kept talking about it constantly, you know, and so we, I would come back here and we'd hang out. He would come down there and we'd hang out, you know, and, yeah, uh, yeah. but we kept talking about it even at that point. And I would say, man, we got, we got to do it, you know, we, we got to take the chance and take, you know, and take that leap, you know. So at some point in time, we got to do it. We kept talking about it. Um, and then a, a very unfortunate incident happened. And it's weird how there's a silver lining, you know, yeah, on, yeah. on a lot of things because um, Hurricane Ivan came through uh, here, as we all know, and it was complete devastation. And uh, he had just actually purchased a house on Pensacola Beach and wow. <clears throat> wanted to be there. And it was literally like two or three weeks. And I'll let him fill you in more on that. But um, and you know that at that particular point in time, which, which is such a negative thing for Pensacola. But as we all know, with negative things, like very positive things happen, people come together, and there's always a positive outcome from yeah. very negative things. And honestly, I could, I could honestly say that uh, if that wouldn't have happened, I'm not so sure that we would have, you know, did it or how we did it or how it would have came by or if it would have happened later. But I let him kind of fill in on that. Piece I mean, of it probably game. wouldn't have happened if that wouldn't have Ivan wouldn't have came through. It probably wouldn't have happened. I was uh, coaching a Pensacola Catholic. Uh -huh. And we just won the state championship down in Tampa in, Tampa. in 2003, yeah. the year before. <laughs> and Matt went and watched the game at uh, um, Le Legends Field yep. at the Yankees Double A Stadium. Uh -huh. We won that uh, game one to nothing in the ninth inning, and it was the first state championship for uh, Huntsville County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we hung out there, and he was telling me how much he loved Tampa, and I love Tampa. And you know, when that happened the following year. Um, <laughs> You know, it just ruined our town. I mean, bad. I think oh, everybody right. knows how bad yeah. it, it devastated it. And it was just time for a change. And I called him and was like, man, if I come down, are we going to do something? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, you promise? He's like, yeah. So I just literally put in my two weeks, packed up my bags, and cruised down to Tampa. And uh, then it was, you know, it was a scary time for me because you know, I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, it was kind of, I, I did run out of cash. I was of cashing my 401k. And but we met an old guy, Bill Phillips, yeah. that uh, that kind of helped us get started and kind of yeah. mentored us at the beginning. We were able to open uh, get an SBA loan and open up Courtside Wine and Spirits, you know. And from there, Matt and I went over to a place across from the original Hooters that had over 500 beers, uh, you know, that they sold retail. Uh -huh. And we walked in, and there was a whole other world was open to us because. You know, it was the big three here, Bud Miller and Coors. And, you know, when I moved down there and saw all the craft beer, it was eye opening. <laughs> you know, and so, you know, me and him really, you know, we're like, man, if there was a place that had 500 beers surrounded around good people and live music, it'd be a place that we go to all the time. And so we, uh, 
you know, I, we have Courtside Wine and Spirits, and then we uh, we had the guy Savino who owned the retail shop come in and help us at the um, at the liquor store, and it expanded the selection there, and the people were coming in and doing tastings, and we just decided that it would be time, you know, that it was time to just to, to try it, and. And also, thinking about it too, one of the drivers was that we were actually in a Publix, um, like uh, shopping center, and they have a pretty, you know, pretty decent wine selection there. And so when we opened up our liquor store, um, we, you know, we didn't want to compete with them on wine. And so, like you said, with Savino and everything, so that's when we started seeking out beer, you know, from all around the world. And we were shocked what we were finding and what was out there. And we were just, it, it was unbelievable the quality of stuff we were finding. We never heard of, you know, from, from different regions and countries, you know, they've been brewing for thousands of years and, you know, monk breweries and so forth. And so we started focusing more on that niche within our, uh, our liquor store and the beer wine liquor store. And then we started giving the family, friends, of course, people coming in and everybody was just, they really loved it, you know? And so we said, okay, we might, you know, we might have something here. Um, and the funny thing is, is when we were doing the, when we, we were never trying to open a liquor store, we were opening, we were going to do a bar, which we wanted to do. Uh-huh. And then a liquor store combo that and you connect the two and you can use the same license. And so that's what we originally were doing. And then through zoning or something, we couldn't open the bar portion. And so, oh, and so then we're right. like, okay, and then so we're like, all right, well, let's continue, let's go ahead and open the liquor store. But then we we still were like, we're opening a bar at yeah. some point in time, you know, we're <laughs> we're gonna do it. And so, but and once again, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. We couldn't do it because of the zoning and the code. Because uh, at that point in time, we would not have done the focus on beer like we did World of Beer. Yeah, and because yeah. that didn't happen, and we were, we focused within the liquor store. Um, and you know, focusing on the beer within the liquor store and finding that, and the partnerships with Savino uh, and, and Scott did a ton of research, and uh, he was in there a ton, and we were all just in it, and it was very obvious to us at that point. That's what the focus needed to be. That's what our core needed to be, and that's what we needed to build our bar around. And so uh, that's what we did. And so we basically said, okay, we're going to do it around beer, but we're going to have live, you know, live music involved with it, upbeat atmosphere, um, you know, and a lot, you know, and no disrespect to any other place, but a lot of the other places we, we researched and benchmarked off of, it wasn't a really high energy vibe with the beer. It was right. more cigars right. and beer and stuff like that. And we wanted to cater to a more young professional, professional demographic. And so, um, you know, obviously the, the beer is a little, it's a higher price point, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so that was important too, the, you know, to focus on the professional, young professionals as well. And so where we were at and everything there, it made, it made a lot of sense. We were in a little uh, uh, suburb off of Tampa called Westchester. And a uh, great community. We love it. We still go back there. We still own the original one. Um, cool. There, and so <laughs> that happened in 2007. Yep. And, um, January of 2007. So we have the first Yeah. And uh, you know, we it, it was something we were so passionate about. We still are, you know, and, and we just got a great response. And it was the same thing as the, when you know the beer portion of the liquor store. People were coming in like, "Where did you find this? Where did you get this?" You know, we had oh, never yeah. seen it. And we were like, "Yeah, man," it's, it's, and it was like discovering something new like all the time. And so it was, uh, it was, it was really exciting. It was cool because it was interactive. You're being able to educate people, and then people were talking about it, conversing, you know, about it. They're posting stuff about, you know what I mean. So it right, was, it was right. a, starting to be a community mm-hmm. more than it was just. And, a, and to his point on that, talking about community, I really feel like the reason why it took off so well was because we kind of brought that southern hospitality down to, the, in. down to Tampa. And what we learned here, you know, yeah. we did cookouts, uh, crawfish boils, and cooked out for free, and you know, did huge golf tournaments, and really brought the community together. And we learned that from from this place. And so, so down there. And now I know that South Florida is nothing like, you know, Northwest Florida or the Northern half or whatever, but, uh, but down there, that's, you know, that's not something that takes place. Like what you were talking about, you know, well, I'm sure it does, but we're at West Chase was a brand new area, you know, and yeah. it was, it, it was, it, it just, it was just developed. And so gotcha. I think when we went in there and did all that, it brought the community together and it was just, it was just a good time. Mm-hmm. It's very similar to, um, Pensacola is bigger than West Chase, but it, it would have been a lot different than going. We wanted to go into a suburb type of area, you know, where everybody knew one another. And it, 
it's like here, you know, right, like right. in Pensacola, Gulf Breeze. I mean, and that's what that's what we love, you know, is that tight knit community, everybody having each other's back, and that's the one thing we love about Pensacola so much and Gulf Breeze, you know, yeah. one of the things. And so, to Scott's point, that's one thing that we brought there. Where everybody was like, man. And we're inviting people in and, you know, we're always, you know, saying, you know, just trying to take care of people like everybody does here. And, you know, I think everybody appreciated that. And we were able to launch that brand. And uh, with that, a ton of great friends and great people. And uh, we've just had such great experiences there. People getting married and they met in our place and just some really cool stories. You know, that we're, it's way more than just... Really, we have we sort of realized that we got something way more than just a bar, you know. Uh-huh. What we wanted, um, and really after that, there was um, we got a really good response from it, and we were we were doing well with the first one. Uh, it was exceeding our expectations, and um, very shortly after that, there was people coming in and saying, "Hey, man, I, I love this. I love the feel of this place." Uh, the community aspect aspect of it, you know, and basically, this is what um, you know myself and my husband wanted to do. Myself, and my dad, or my brother, or yeah, so forth. Yeah. Can you help us do this? Can you help uh, us consult to open a place like this? You know, and honestly, for us, you know, we didn't have any money, and you know, when we did it, we actually uh, a real important point to to opening the you know among the other ones, the, probably the most important one is our parents mortgage our, their houses in order for us to open the first one in West Chase. Wow. Yeah, I still to this day, I always tell people that, like, yeah. 100% that's the coolest thing anybody's ever done. Well, it would not have happened. Either one of us. And yeah. I hope to God we can do that for our kids one day because, I mean, for them to do that for us, when that's really all they had was uh, yeah, a special. They were, they, they were retired in the school system, um, pretty much just retired, where they're kind of everything's good and they get a call from their their sons like hey we need some money <laughs> so uh but um it was um but you know they you know after we explained to them what was going on and you know it wasn't a quick thing you know and uh they they believed in us and backed us and it absolutely wouldn't have happened if they wouldn't have done that so you know always you know gives me chills kind of thinking about it because like scott said i mean that's something huge that are, you know they believed in us had our back and uh, we're able to let us get started. So you, you so, opened up some more locations after that? Yeah, that's what, so there was people shortly after saying, can you, I would, can you consult for us? Can you uh, help us open something like this? This is something that I've been talking about with you know some significant other, my friend, what, whatever uh-huh. it may be. And um, so we didn't have, you know, it, this happened like very shortly after we opened. So this, this was in, well, yeah, but people were talking about it like, like five six months after we opened uh, and so um at that point in time we didn't have we knew we went we knew we wanted to open another location but we didn't have the capital to do mm-hmm. it you know um and so we, when people started coming in and were interested in it and, and it was it was a pretty overwhelming response uh people that wanted to do it we started talking about it and we really didn't want to help people open up competition you know what I mean? Like it didn't make much sense for us to do that, and so yeah. we uh, we looked into the franchising uh, model, and so we uh, we hired a consulting group to come in because uh, we wanted to expand our own brand, not help other people create competition and have yeah. a bunch of other brands. Yeah. We want to expand our own, and so uh, after a lot of research and uh, we got a lot of high marks for our brand for the franchising component and what makes a franchise work and attractive to franchisees. And so uh, once we did that, we went we went into all the legalities and to do an FDD and become a franchise company. Yeah, yeah. With even with one location, and that's that's pretty uncommon, you know, to do that. And so, uh, but we had a lot of people that, that really wanted to do it, and so we uh, we proceeded with that. And that takes about that took about like four or five months to get all the legalities, you know, all the paperwork, the FDDs, and all that stuff ready to go. But we had people waiting on it actually do it and so right when it was done I think we signed we opened in January um, of 2007 and we signed our first franchise agreement in December of 2007 I believe is right so within so it happened very fast I mean it really did you know and so um, but after that you know that we we were we started in you know the franchise in Florida and then uh, we, we started franchising out of Florida um, and then we actually were talking to a group that um, was interested in taking all of South Florida, uh, Ben DeVello and Jim Pollard, 
and uh, they were ex uh, OSI Outback uh, executives. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so uh, after talking with them, and then you know they really shared you know our vision, you know, and what we wanted to do, as all franchisees have to. But we just saw something more in them, and we started talking to them about partnering. And so then we actually uh, so partnered with them, and they came in as as fifty fifty partners with Scott and I. Cool. To help grow the franchise side of things, the world of here. And so we did that, and we had we had a lot of good growth. Um, and then and that was in what about 2010? Yeah, 2009, 2010. And then it was in, and then Paul Avery came on. He was an, another ex uh, OSI uh, Outback uh, executive. Then he came on and, and he bought into the company when 2013. 13. Uh, and so then since then we've, we've gone, you know, he, he's been a great asset to the brand, of course. I mean, he acts as a C, CEO. Right, uh, right. And that happened in really good timing because Scott and I really knew we wanted to, for several things, because he, they've done it before. They've gone international, uh, yeah. you know. So, um, you know, so now we have upward of 70 locations international as well. Uh, he's acting as a CEO. But when that happened, we always knew we wanted to move back to Pensacola. We always knew we wanted to raise our kids here, uh, and our families, our extended families, are here, and so it was a perfect segue into what we personally wanted to do uh, and what we wanted to achieve in the business aspect of our lives as well. So it was a great, great thing, and it's been going great, and that's that's kind of where World of Beer is now. We uh, we first thing we did when we got back to Pensacola was look for property to open where we're sitting right here. Yeah, we were both ready to get back home. Man. We, That's we cool. It here. That's yeah, cool. we, we, we definitely wanted our kids to be around the grandparents and the mm-hmm. family. So yeah. that was real important to us. It really was. It was perfect timing for Paul to come in and for us to get back home. How, how many locations do you guys have? Total? 77, I believe, right now, two international. Two, two international? Yeah. Where are those two locations? Seoul, Seoul and Shanghai. Shanghai. And there's some other ones coming in the pipeline, international, that are in other countries. Uh, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, uh, yeah, so. yeah. That Man, what an amazing story. Now, in addition to World of Beer, you have a few other brands going on. Now, all I'm aware of is just what's right here. So we have the Blend Lounge, which you also have additional locations of Blend, right? That's not just the Pensacola thing. It started in Tampa. And we kind of yeah. almost as an accident, you know. We uh, we started a wine bar right next to World of Beer, and uh, then we needed to expand, and then it turned into to blend, and that was more in our wheelhouse. Matt and I knew gotcha, where, uh, gotcha. where we were better at. So <laughs> well, once it evolved, we uh, after a while we were like, "Man, we're never sitting around drinking wine. <laughs> what, what are we doing? What are we doing?" Here? Yeah, so. We, we, you know, blend turned into, you know, what, what it is today. Yeah, yeah. And, and that was the original one. That's the only other one we have. Okay. But outside right. of Tampa, we don't own anything other than what's called. Right, Everything right. based here. And, you know, we, we started blend. And then and Matt and I found a cool little spot out on the beach and opened a casino beach bar. And then, you know, when we expanded blend, we, um, during the week, you know, we had an empty spot right there where Taco Valve currently is. And we just brainstormed on what would be the best thing to go there? And we both love tacos, and it was a small, cool little spot. And you know, we came up with that. And then, as you know, we we, um, we were able to buy the parking lot, and the other four bays over there. And every time Matt and I went somewhere out of town, we always ended up at a pizza by the slice place. And <laughs> yeah. there we did. And so there, there just wasn't one downtown. Oh, and uh, uh, just kind of once again, it was it was it was a good time, man. Yeah. You know, there was nothing down here like that for Pizza by the Slice. And with everything else going on downtown, I mean, we felt like it was uh, was a good opportunity. I mean, there's not a better time to be downtown than, than right now. That's cool. Yeah, it's really, right. uh, yeah really so that's right. cool how you guys just kind of, you know, you said, what would I want? Let's make it happen. You that's know, pretty much what happened the whole way along. I mean, for the most part, it really was. I mean, you know, from World of Beer to, you know, uh, Taco Agave as well with, you know, the focus there is obviously tequila. Yeah. Other than the tacos and, uh-huh. you know, um, uh, you know, Old Hickory, they do a great job with the, the bourbons and the whiskeys and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And they were, they've had great success, great partners in the community as well. Uh, but, you know, we, we wanted to focus, obviously, you know, there was a little, we thought there was a little hole there we could focus on tequila. Uh, and good tacos as well, and yeah. something that was 
fast and not a huge menu, you know, like here. I think World of Beer is the only thing we really have that has a huge, like a big menu and a huge variety. And, uh, you know, we didn't start out as food guys, but we kind of uh, are getting into that market as well. And like Scott said, and like you said, you know, it's just more stuff that we're, when we go somewhere and we, we want to do something or, you know, you know what I mean? And something that comes natural to us. Yeah. Um, I think we were on Duval Street when, when we were yeah. in Key West and yeah. we were eating a slice of pizza, you know, and our tenants went out in that building where graffiti is right now. And we're sitting there eating a slice of pizza and we're like, what are we going to do with that space? You know? And so we're sitting there like, you know what? There's, there's no pizza. There's no New York pizza by the slice right downtown. Yeah. Yes. You know, and so it just made sense for us to do it. And um, like Scott said, we, we own the property and, and just so happened we had, you know, a tenant go out, which we thought was going to be, you know, not such a good thing for us for business from a real estate perspective. Right. But right. it ended up once again, you know, so I just, you know, looking back, just kind of talking about this, it's just... <laughs> It's funny how, you know, things that are negative and, or, you know, at the time turn out to be good things if you kind of stick in there and look at the bright side of things. Right, right. And originally we were going to do this interview over there, but it was too busy. There wasn't any yeah, room inside. So, I mean, you guys have only been open for a little bit and it's already slammed in there. So, uh, man, you know, some of the things that, that just kind of really stick out to me is, is you know, in your story... You guys took advantage of those moments when they, they, they were more of like speed bumps for you guys, those obstacles and those times of adversity, and you just overcame them, and th- I think they kind of fueled inspiration for, for you to even move forward to where most people quit. You know, most people give up when the house they just bought gets destroyed in a storm, and when they have a great idea and they don't have any money you know, and instead of trying to call someone and say, hey, will you help us? They just say, I can't do it. Or, or you know, all the things that you guys have went through. And I'm sure that there are numerous events that we haven't even talked about where it just seemed like it was a roadblock and it seemed like what was a negative. You guys just turn around and turn, turn it into something good. Man, really impressive. Well, well, I think as a testament, sure. honestly, it's about, I mean, we're, we're just great friends and we've been through you know, highs and lows, like like any friend's relationship. But I mean, we've been good partners. I think my weaknesses are his strengths. Yeah. You know, and so that's why this is this has worked. And so when these get tough, we're able to lean on each other. It's a little bit tougher to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. What an amazing story, guys. I appreciate it. So, so we, you know, originally this was all all going to be about graffiti pizza, and um, you guys just have such a greater story than that. That's just you know an addition to kind of like another page in another chapter of your story. And um, congratulations and props thanks, to you guys you. For, for what you're doing. Thanks for spending the time. Yeah. You know, what, what What I thought of earlier when you guys were, and I know we were short on time, so you guys got to go, but um, what it made me think of when you were down there in Tampa and these people were just, you know, that sense of community was really forming around your, your place, around the first world of beer. It just really reminds me of, uh, as an experience as a musician and a DJ, my whole thing is is the crowd um, will most likely not remember the songs that you play, but they will always remember how you made them feel yep. and the experience. So, yeah. yeah, and that's true. And that's 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 what it made me think of. Yeah. where you guys were talking about how you were down there and you just created a sense of community, and you know there are people who have built memories around the businesses that you guys have created, around the spaces that you have made, and that stuff sticks. Yeah. It sticks. You you don't sell beer. You sell experience. You don't sell. You know. You know. Yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. your product, and um, and that's why you guys have been so successful. So well, thank, you. thank you again. Thank yeah, you. man. Thank you. Absolutely appreciate, appreciate you guys, you, man. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your time. It's so it's Matt Lafon. Is it Lafon or Lafon? Lafon. <laughs> All right, Matt Lafon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Scott Zepp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Thank you again yeah, for your yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate Thank it. You. And, uh, man, hey, from the chamber, you guys just reach out. Let us know if there's anything that we can do. We're glad to be your partner. All right, Thank man. You. Likewise. Thank yeah, you all. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it.